نبيهم وختما وقد صار فينا المسلمين وعندنا عمة علم الصالحون التقرما عليه صلاة الله ثم سلامه صلاة ترقينا إلى الذكر والحزن وفينا رجال السابقون وعندنا يا أقطاب عتم أبوه كنز متلزما صلاة وتسليم على طوى أحمد وآل وأصحاب صراط مقوما عليه صلاة الله ثم سلامه صلاة ترقنا إلى الذكر والحزن محمد رسول الله يا أعلى وأرفع لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله يا أعلى وأرفع لا إله إلا الله Majid itu London, London Insyaallah atau di luar Bela Jawa Insyaallah, di dalam Insyaallah, di dalam Bela.
and we are very blessed to have him. He will come and join us for Hudifa and Hailama. Alhamdulillah. Say Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And mashallah, what we see is that this is a man of, of deen and love of Rasulullah sallallahu And we just ask him, please, if he can share a few beautiful words with us. Because all of us, alhamdulillah, are lovers of Allah and are lovers of Rasulullah sallallahu And it will be beautiful to hear some, some words. As you know, this is a man of ill, of knowledge, intellect. But please, everybody, let's listen to our share, alhamdulillah. Usually when I sit with brothers and sisters, I, I tell them something about the history of my family and how we joined the Tariqah to Jannah. Mm -hmm. And the reason I do that is it helps me to remind myself and remind my family as to why we joined and also helps me clarify for myself and for brothers and sisters the real purpose and real benefit of the Allah that we do. After the jihad of Uthman and Khudu, now about my two years after my family started in, in 2019, this is exactly 200 years when the first in our line, Ibrahim Zabi, who came in. And after his death, three of his sons in succession uh, became famous. When the third son died, the, uh, the kingmakers had selected one of his grandsons from the third Ayyah, Abdullah Major Faruqi. But at that time, Ayyahs were appointed from Sokoto. And the Sultan appointed another grandson, the son of the third Ayyah. So he appointed Muhammad Chukwu, the son of Ayyah. And as a result of that, his cousins, who were many in number, decided to have a rebellion and that rebellion led to civil war and the civil war led to the death actually the killing of the of their cousin the Emir Muhammad Chukwu and one of them Ali became Emir when the British came uh, defeated him in battle took him to Mokoja and appointed another brother of his Muhammad Abbas. 
So our story with Tijania begins at this point with the Amy Muhammad attacks. After ascending the throne, he started having serious problems with his conscience. And he would say to scholars, I am afraid. So my brothers and myself took up arms, led a civil war, killed an emir who was our cousin, our father and his father, St. Thomas. We did not fight him because he was a Kafir, we did not fight him because he was supporting shirk, we did not fight him to live to the Kalima of Allah. We fought him because of our throne. So my fear is, when we die, me and my brothers, what we will do to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in this process, he kept asking every scholar who came, how can I find the forgiveness of Allah? Until finally, Sheikh came from Mauritania, who was a sheriff and who was a Tijani. And he said to him, first of all, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said in a hadith, I met them with Tawbah. So your regret is itself Tawbah. So the first thing is you must never stop this Nadam. You must never stop regretting. You must always remember that what you and your brothers did was wrong. But I'm going to recommend to you a few things that I think will help you. So first of all, Alhamdulillah, you are a worthy prince and worthy emir. And you are generous. I want you to continue spending your wealth to help the poor and the needy because their prayer will help you and your brothers. Second, you have to do Raddul Madaya. Because after the civil war, you won the battle. You and your family and your armies took over people's land, people's farms, people's houses, people's slaves. So as part of your repentance now, you must return to everybody anything that was taken from him. And he also did that. The third, if you can, find a woman, a sharifiyah from the descendants of the Prophet and marry her. And he found one and married. Uh, she was the mother of Tulaki Hashim, who was the father of the late Galadina Khan of Tijani Hashim. And then finally he said, join the Tariq of Tijani. Because after all your Afkar, after your reading of the Quran, after everything you are supposed to do, you have a guaranteed minimum number of aura that you have. You will seek forgiveness Every day, after Subha, after Asr, Dorim Mudifa, say Asifrullah, Nadi Madadi, La Ilaha Illa Allah, Ayyukayyum. You will remember Allah, saying La Ilaha Illa Allah, and you will hold on to your wasila to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, 
سيدنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم with the salat على النبي so Muhammad Abbas accepted the Tijaniya litany because it is his spirit for seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for him and for his brothers who committed this crime. So I always tell people that our family and our palace has no choice but to continue. Because if an Abbas was my grandfather's grandfather, so if they had not committed this offense of the civil war and the killing of their cousin, maybe we wouldn't have been here. So we are also beneficiaries of this offense. So we have to always seek forgiveness for them, seek forgiveness for us, and seek closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reason I say this is there are many people who don't understand what tariqa is. Uh, tariqa is one thing, Sufism is another. Sufism is a body of knowledge. Like all bodies of knowledge, you have good Sufism and bad Sufism. Just like you have good tafsir and bad tafsir. You have tafsir about the Even in al hadith, you have a hadith mawdua. Even in fiqh, you have um, a, a, a bad fiqh, you have good fiqh. And anyone who follows the tariqa must make sure that if you go beyond the awrad, if you want to go into the study of Sufism, make sure that you study good Sufism. Mm -hmm. And how do you know good Sufism? Sheikh Amati Jari the Lama Anu gave us a very simple formula. Mm -hmm. Whatever you hear from me, <laughs> put it on the scale of the Sharia. If it is consistent with the Sharia, take it. If it is not, leave it. Now what is the implication of this? It is that anyone who says he is in the Tariqa Tijaniya must learn about the Sharia. Because if you don't know the Sharia, how do you know what is right and what is wrong? So it is the Tariqa of seeking knowledge. So every time I sit with brothers and sisters, the younger ones, I tell them, learn the Sharia. Live by the Sharia. Live by the Sunnah. Hold on to your awrad, hold on to our love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to the Sahaba, to Ahlul Bayt, to our Shio and Audia. But make sure that in everything you do, you do not go and read bad Sufism and bring it into the Tariqa and as a result of that give all of us a bad name. <laughs> so um, just as Sheikh Ibrahim Nia said, just as Sheikh Tijab Amit Jani said, she said, all our Shiyok, Sheikh Ahmed Sukhairaj, all of them have said, anyone who says he is Tijani and who claims that you are free from following the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is not Tijan. Mm -hmm. This tariqa is founded on commitment to the Quran and Sunnah, and these awrad are supposed to give us keep us closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. They are supposed to lift us to the level of Ihsan. Mm -hmm. Our objective in the end is to get to that level where, as the Prophet said, and ta'abud Allah ka'annaka tarah fa'in lam takun tarahu fa'in hu yarak. But you cannot have ihsan if you demolish Islam and Iman. So your Islam must be good. You must know Tawheed. You must know what is the what you must believe about Allah, about his prophets, about the angels, about the day of judgment, about Qadr. Your prayers, your fasting, your zakah, your hajj, 
reading the Quran, and then you add on it all these works of Ihsan and hope, uh, be it in the last one or the other. And this is the difference between those who seek um, that closeness and those who are content to stay at one level. And there's nothing wrong with it. Allah SWT has already told us that we are at different levels. ثم أورثنا الكتاب الذي نستفينا من عبادنا فمنهم ظالم لنفسه ومنهم مقتصد ومنهم سابق بالخيرات بإذن الله. So you have Amma, you have Khasa, you have Khasa to Khasa. And we all hope and pray, inshallah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we go on this path. And that as we worship with our Dahir, we try to cultivate the Baatim. This is what Sufism is about. Because every act of worship has two components. There's an external component and there's an internal component. And the command is directed first and foremost to the internal component. The external is the, is the means, the internal is the end. This is where Allah says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي سَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ You pray, but what you seek in prayer is the khushu. Kutiba alaykum usiyam kama kutiba ala ladina min kablikum la allakum tattahu. You fast. You will not refuse to fast. But what you seek with fasting is taqwa. Lain yanala allaha luhumuha wa la dimauha wa la kinarku taqwa minkum. You slaughter your rams, you slaughter your cows, you slaughter your camels. But Allah does not drink the blood. Allah does not eat the flesh. What gets to Allah is the taqwa from you. So you must hold on to the zahir of sharia, but also remember that the purpose is the burden, is the ma'rifah, is the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And 100 people will say the same prayer, but their reward with Allah is different, and that reward is determined by the purity of their heart, the presence of Allah in their heart, and the constant remembrance of Allah. In the Salata, Janha, and the Fashal Muka, Wala Dikullahi, Akbar. So, um, yes, um, uh, those who are able to have dhikrullah in their prayer. They're different from those who do not have um, dhikrullah. And this is really what we hope um, in the Turok to achieve um, and to have to, the different stages um, of the heart um, to walk called shukru, sabr, rida, um, inaba, tawbah, um, all the stages um, of the heart and also to purify the heart from Kibur, from Ujjur, from Sum'a, from Riyadh, because those are the dangerous diseases and the sins that are far more serious than the external sins. Most people do not understand this. Uh, we are concerned about the external sins, sins like drinking alcohol and zina and so on, but the sins of arrogance, of envy, of jealousy, of hatred, of ingratitude is far, far more severe mm -hmm. than the sin of zina or drinking. The, the sins of the heart are more severe than the sins of the body. Just like the work of the heart is more rewarding than the work of the body. You can do the work externally and it will not benefit you. Waylu de Musalli and the Hum Asaratihim Sahum and the Hum Yurahum they pray. They are praying, they are saying Salah, but Allah curses them because they do not pay attention in their Salah and because they are praying so that other people can see. So they pray, but they are munafiku. Because they are doing it so that human beings will say, this person is a religious person, this person is praying. And the whole idea now is to purify your, your heart from Riyah, purify it from Ojib, from Kibur, and all those others, Bogdan, Nifaq, 
And so uh, to see yourself, don't see yourself as better than the next Muslim. Remember that whatever guidance you have has come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you on your own cannot guide yourself. You on your own cannot guide yourself. Your sheikh on his own cannot guide. If you go to a sheikh and receive guidance, it is because Allah has guided you. Because Allah said to the Prophet ﷺ, If the Prophet cannot guide, who does can? So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guiding us. And uh, this hidayah is, um, has many levels, of course. Uh, there is the guidance to being Muslims in the first place. There is the guidance to um, knowing the Quran and the Sunnah that we pray that Allah give us. Uh, the guidance of um, standing firm on the Sirat al-Mustaqim. But we, we continue to seek that guidance so that we remain on that path until we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you can be guided and then towards the end you lose it. So, and so the Hidayah, you will continue to seek this Hidayah until the very end. And finally, finally you seek guidance, not on the Sirat al again in this world. Why? Because if you are not on that Sirat in this world, you will have a problem when you are crossing the Sirat of Akhirah. It is those who stand on the straight path here that are able to cross that straight path there um, and uh, join up with uh, uh, the Prophet وسلم, and the Sahaba and the Bayt and Ibadullah um, uh, uh, So these are my few uh, comments and my few words. Uh, like I said, I was ambushed. I did not think I was going to be asked uh, uh, to speak. Um, I do hope that um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look at what we have said, what is right, give us reward for it, what is wrong, may Allah forgive us. Aqul qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah hadhi wa lakum. Wa insayil muslimin subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yisifun. Wa salamu ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. MashaAllah, <laughs> MashaAllah, that is a beautiful, beautiful lecture. So much knowledge to, to reflect on.